All right, we are heading out just to do a little spot and stalk. Danny's got her 3.30, and uh, the sun is setting. The feeder is about to go off. Well, folks, we are set up. We're going to start hunting hogs here tonight. I'll show you why. Kenneth's coming out. Got it all set up, ready to hunt. I'm with Joe Cunningham out in his shooting range, and he is going to show us how he puts custom turrets atop his stealth vision scopes. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. Well, our weapon of choice is my wife's 3030 and uh, some Hornady ammo. Got the uh, camera and the shooting sticks ready to go. We are out here at the Buck and Bass Ranch, and my wife and I are going to do a spot stalk, hopefully. So we're going to give it some time. The feeders go off at 7. It is exactly 5.30. So we'll give her a bit of time, and then we'll head out. See if we can get us a hog. With her 3030. All right, we are heading out just to do a little spot and stalk. Demi's got her 3030, and uh, the sun is setting. The feeder is about to go off in about five minutes. All right, we are heading out, so uh, join us on this little spot and stalk. Maybe we'll get on a hog. in there so Demi's elected not to shoot at this point. Alright, last minute look here maybe, I don't know. Big old sounder all logs, but it's just a matter of getting the right one. 
I know my wife, she'll pick out the perfect one. If she didn't see the perfect one, she won't shoot. Those look to be probably 30 pounds. They're not real big. The young pigs. Another two months, three months, they'll be, uh, they'll be prime eating size, but uh, I'm guessing she's not going to shoot. Real world outdoors here, folks. Sometimes you have game in the feeder, and it's not what you want, so you don't shoot. Enjoy the show and uh, may go home with no pork, but that's okay. We'll get them next time. You know what? There's nothing better than getting out with your wife doing stuff like this. But we don't always kill one. This is hunting, it's not always about. Because you see one, you have to shoot. It's not that. It's the right one. Ethical shots, finding the right animal that you want to harvest at the right age, the right size, and you take it. Sometimes, you enjoy the show. What a beautiful night. Well, But they're about cleaning that corn out on down there. They've probably eaten most of it. Yeah, I see why she didn't shoot. We'll zoom in here a little bit. They're just not big hogs. Mama was with them. It looked like there was two big sows in there. Just not what we're looking for tonight. But we sit here because you never know, one could come running in. Oh yeah, it looks like they're leaving. Mama just crossed the road and the young ones are following her, so I think they're uh, Calling it an evening. I think we will too. We're getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Fun night to sit out here. But no, uh, no meat on the pole, but that's okay. Demi decided not to shoot one because they're small and I don't blame her. I think I do the same thing. All right, I think we're heading back to camp. Let's go, th go throw some venison steaks on the grill and call it a night. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Stealth Vision, high-tech precision driven equipment tailored for the modern hunter. Well, hello, my friends. It is your old buddy, Luke Clayton, and check out my new Freedom Blind. The UPS man just brought this in right to the house, shipped it right to me. Now, I've been using these blinds for probably nine or ten years, the, uh, the older snap lock. These actually are constructed where they will ship right to your door uh, by UPS or normal carriers like that, other than a bobtail truck. We have a brand new plan on this. We're going to assemble this. Now, I'm going to put this in the woods about one mile from my house over at my buddy Kenneth's place. Now, hunting there is a challenge because there's a pecan grove. We're going to mostly be hunting hogs and deer probably in the fall. But the hogs come out and hit those pecan trees. You never know where they're going to come out. The squirrels are knocking the pecans off right now, and the hogs are out there eating them. So. As the pecans drop, those hogs move from different areas. We're going to mount this 4x4 Freedom Blind 
on a little trailer and we're going to show you the whole process and we're going to show you why we're doing this uh, put it on the trailer the hogs are in one area of his place we can move it out set it up and hunt them from the blind if they move to a completely different area start hitting the pecan trees or our, our corn we'll also put out a corn feeder and set this thing up around it so wherever the hogs are or the deer on our little trailer we're going to be mobile and we can take our freedom blind to that so let's go over you can meet my friend Kenneth Kenneth is a good welder and he's going to construct a little trailer that we can hook to a golf cart or this old pickup or whatever and move this freedom blind around uh, it's going to be very handy we can take the blind where the hogs are or where the deer are this fall so let's go over and meet Kenneth and uh, this will kind of give you an idea, a new application for a freedom blind. Now you can construct a trailer any way you want to. You could buy a tra little trailer and mount this on a four by four piece of plywood and put it on that if you want to. In essence, you probably could mount the, uh, build the uh, freedom blind on a, set it on a piece of uh, plywood, four by four, put it in the back of a truck and hunt out of that. But we want it to be permanent, more or less on a trailer and mobile. So go with me over to Kenneth's and I'll show you what we're going to do. Well friends, I am Luke Clayton. I'm an old outdoor writer from Texas and this is my buddy Kenneth Shepard. Kenneth is my neighbor and hunting partner and he's got a ranch here that's working alive with hogs. It is. It a, is. Lot hogs, a lot right? of hogs. I've killed a bunch here and this guy's killed a ton of them. Now this is a freedom blind. Snap lock hunting blind. I've been using these snap lock hunting blinds, Kenneth, for 10 years. Hey. Yes, but what I like about this, it ships UPS or whatever right to your door. Now, friends, we have a uh, video showing how to assemble this thing step by step on the Snaplock Hunting Blinds website. Our deal is Kenneth has got a pecan grove that goes way back in the woods to a slough, and those hogs will be hitting one pecan tree that's dropping pecans or a group of them, and then they'll be on the other end, way off. So. Our idea, Kenneth's a pretty good fabricator too, but our idea was to assemble the blind, it didn't take long, and you know, plywood on it. We put a, a carry rope on either side. Let's break this loose. Kenneth put this rope so we can get a, a guy on either side. It's not hard to, mm -hmm. it's not hard to pick up. So the, the, the idea behind this is to put it on a trailer and make it mobile. Make it mobile. That way you can go where the game is. That's the best thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> now we could have five or six of these. We may get some more, probably will. But uh, Kenneth, let's go back and we've got it hooked up where we can pull it. You can see, we'll sh give you a good look at it right now of how we did it. But no trick about the trailer. You can you can build a trailer, you can use your trailer. You, you probably could put it, no, I don't know about putting it in the back of a truck, but Maybe. Mo mobility. And, and then really, Kenneth, uh, if you find a spot once where the game is real plentiful coming in all the time, just take his rope, set her down. We'll, me and you will set it down on a block and, and then use it there and then make it mobile when we want to, right? Yeah. Well, friends, let me give you a close-up look of what we've done here. I think, like I say, it's not rocket science putting it on a trailer and making it mobile, but it is going to be very, very useful. We're going to put a lot of pork, and Kenneth's probably going to shoot a big old buck out of it this fall. We'll see. Okay, so Kenneth, yes, sir. well actually we've got it hooked to a golf cart, but we, you know, right here. Mm -hmm. Nothing magic about the trailer. Use the trailer that you want, right, right Kenneth? That's exactly right. This was actually a little boat trailer that I have, a little one-man boat. Yep, and if you want to, you know, it's very easy to use the rope. Just, there's one on either side, and just pick that up and set it on the ground. It's, Did a good job. It's so easy to pick it up. Yeah. And man, I can't tell you how many times I've been hunting somewhere and a deer been running over there, the hogs, and I'm like, man, I wish I was over there. Now we can just go over there. You can pick that thing up and, and move it. That's right. That's or the cool. thing is, if you if you really like a spot, I don't know, if there's a buck running yeah. in a certain area, leave it there. Leave it there, sure. And a good thing about it, yeah. it's, it's, it's portable. It's portable. It's lightweight. Well, Easy Kenneth, let's, let's do this, buddy. Uh -huh. Let's... Uh, Let's pull it back, like, folks. What we're part of what we're talking about is this this long stretch of pecan trees on on the back. Of, there's a slough on the other side, but you can see deer, hogs. There's a long way for these animals to run. 
Right now, we've got a feeder sitting right back in here, and that's probably where we're going to use it near the feeder for hogs. So let's go take a look and get it set up. What do you say? Is that, that good with you, Kenneth? Sounds like a wonderful thing to do first thing in the morning. Well, folks, we are set up. We're going to start hunting hogs here tonight. I'll show you why. Kenneth's coming out. Got it all set up, ready to hunt? Ready, Luke. ready to go? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll show our friends why we chose this spot right here. And right here is one reason. Right over here. We have a feeder that's been throwing corn for about a month right there. Now, remember me talking about the long row of pecan trees? Way back, this goes way back in there, and there's a slough back to the left. This is hog central right here. The thing is, Kenneth, you know, and there's a deer running right there. You can see why it's going to be nice. Look at that. You can see why we're going to set this feeder right here in this stand. So this is this is a hunting spot, and this goes back down there, way back in there. Kenneth, yes, sir. You're probably going to wind up shooting a big old buck out of our Snaplock Freedom <laughs> Blind <laughs> right here. That'd be fun. <laughs> I think you're going to, buddy. And this this spot, you stay where you're at. I'll give everybody an overview. Okay. How about this blind sitting on a trailer, folks? I know Kenneth and I didn't think this up. Somebody's had to think about this, but it sure is a good idea. It's going to be handy. It's yep. Be handy. And then uh, I think for for the hogs, with that feeder right over there, Kenneth, I think probably just leave it right here close by and position the window where it's right looking at the feeder. Exactly. We're still hog hunting for at least another month before oh, yeah. we even start thinking about deer hunting. No, no, it's way too early for that. Yeah. Well, folks, Snaplock hunting blinds. This one is the Freedom Blind right here. I've been using these things, Kenneth, for 10 years. And right back behind me, you know where I used to hunt? Yes, sir. I, I, that's where I used the first one. The cool thing is about these blinds, folks, is a, a UPS truck can bring it right to your door. Right. Used to, uh, the other, when I first started using the snap locks, uh, bobtail truck, you know, carrier had to bring it out. But you don't have to put it on a trailer. Something to think about. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg, American built, American strong. The Wyo Steakhouse, catch and release apparel. AGM Global Vision, your go-to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters. Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns. Good morning, sports fans. This is your fishing tip on a sportsman's life. Today we're going to talk about slabs. A slab is a lead spoon. I am asked constantly. It is exactly what we say. We fish this bait vertically. This right here is a two ounce bait. This, we fish in deep water for these strippers. Now, the way we apply these things is we either drop them, rip them up, or we bump them on the bottom. That's real popular on the flats. I got something cool right here. Chris made this for me and it's 50 years of slabs. There's the evolution of slabs. Round ones, fat ones, short ones, skinny ones, but this is the slab. We use this as much as we do jig fishing. And uh, it's a great way to catch stripers. I know our host Luke just loves to go slabbing. So, if you have any questions, just give us a call. This is Bill Carey with Striper Express with your fishing tip on a sportsman's life. Go catch a fish. A special thanks to these fine sponsors, Vineyard Max Deer Products, and the Anchor Inn and Marina on beautiful Lake Tawakany, one hour east of Dallas. I'm with Joe Cunningham out in his shooting range, and he is going to show us how he puts custom turrets atop the Stealth Vision scopes. After he zeroes them with an MOA turret dial, he can then know his ballistic trajectories and build a custom turret 
So all you have to do is dial to the yardage. Show us what you got here, Joe. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is, uh, I've basically, I have set the zero stop on all these guns when I'm shooting the data. And uh, just got this turret back from Terry. It's, it's burnt to match the data, which the data you'll see that I've shot on this gun is on this tape is what I do um, every time I'm shooting data as I keep notes right here. So what I want, first thing I wanna make sure I do is I'm gonna bottom this out against my zero stop, which is right there. I'm gonna come up to my zero. Now I'm gonna replace the zero with the MOA turret with my 200 yard zero on this turret. So I hold this turret still right there on the bottom half. I'm gonna loosen the top, top cap making sure that's still on zero right here so it hasn't moved one way or the other. I'm gonna pull it straight off. And then I'm gonna take this custom turret, which is burnt in yardage. I'm gonna set it right down on the number two, right there, as you see it split the two. I'm gonna definitely snug this top cap right here, tighten it down. And now what you've got is a custom yardage turret for your gun. So if I was uh, wanting to shoot, let's say I want to shoot 800 yards, I am gonna dial right up to the number eight. I'm gonna get level inside, I'm gonna squeeze the trigger and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So another thing I wanna to touch base with you on the markings we have on our turrets so everybody knows. The first diamond you might see, let's start right here. That's gonna be 425. The bigger one, 450, 475, and then 500. For instance, if you're shooting, let's say we're shooting 1,200 yards, but in one revolution of this particular turret, I come all the way around and I'm getting about 950 right there. So after that, if I'm shooting 1,200 yards, I pick up the second row of numbers, which the 10 is 1,000, 1,050, 1,100, and if I'm wanting to shoot 12, I split the 12 right there. So uh, that's basically how our custom turrets work in yardage. And uh, it's simple, but uh, you ever had any questions, feel free to call us. We'd love to help you out. It is hot. It's the second or third day of September. I'm out on my little place. It cooled off a little bit, but it's time to start putting out the Vineyard Max. It won't be long. Our hunting season start here with for bow on the first part of October. Actually, I think the last days of September trying to set up a place here for my daughter to hunt this year. We're not far from our old deer camp where I spent a lot of happy days many, many years ago, but uh, I'm gonna start putting this out here in just a few minutes. And it's got a spot picked out here along the trail. Pretty much gonna put everything in a single pile to start with, maybe in about two or three piles actually. And then I'll come back later and just two small piles because as I've noticed in the past, very often you have one dominant doe and we're about to get to the point where the buck's gonna be dominant. <clears throat> They'll take over that feed site and I don't let anything else get close to it. Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoke Intex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.